I'm excited to announce that we have a new cooking show called Cooking with Love. We're gonna be doing a weekly show to showcase great New Orleans dishes and some of my favorites that I love to cook. This week we're gonna do shrimp pasta. We're gonna show you a simple way how to make this for your family and when we come right back, we'll show you how to make this amazing dish. Welcome back to Cooking with Love, guys. So now we're gonna dive into our shrimp pasta, but this is my mom's kitchen. This is so personal for me to be cooking in her kitchen growing up, uh, seeing her cook and seeing my grandmother cook. This is just such a beautiful thing. So we're gonna get right on to it, guys. So I'm gonna to explain to you what we have here. Um, we have yellow bell pepper, we have an orange bell pepper, we have red, we have green, and we also have yellow onion, and we have some fresh garlic from the cloves, and then we have some green onion over here. And we have a few powdered seasonings on, over here to go into your food. Now, the thing I love about cooking is fresh seasoning. You don't have to use all of these seasonings, guys. You, you know, I know there's a lot of going on here, but if you don't wanna use the orange bell pepper or the red or the green, because it is a little more expensive, but if you want that taste of boldness together, I would go with this, but not all the time. It depends on your pocket though. So if you just wanna use the yellow onion and the green bell pepper and the parsley and the green onion, that's great too, and the um, garlic. Make sure you have the garlic because you wanna have that garlic flavor in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off, I think I'm gonna start off with the parsley. So the Italian parsley, let me explain to you about the Italian parsley, what it does for your food uh, versus curly parsley. Curly parsley to me is more of a little decoration for your food, but the Italian parsley gives it a little more flavor. So this is my choice of putting in my foods is, is the Italian parsley. Italian parsley run you about a dollar, dollar ninety nine. Sometimes it's on sale for 69 cents depending on your local grocery store. So I have a some small knives and some cooks love to use the big knives, but this is perfect for your seasoning. So we're going to start off cutting up our Italian parsley and make sure you don't cut yourself. So we're just going to cut it really fine and some, if you prefer to use a food processor on time, if you're limited on time, you can definitely use a food processor but this is therapeutic for me to, to cut up seasoning. It's just something about cutting up seasoning and doing it yourself versus a machine but it's up to you. All right so we got the Italian parsley. It had, it's something about smelling your fresh vegetables kind of bind them together, make it really, really fine. Now, you know what? My grandmother loves to cook with big seasoning showing. Something about when you see the seasoning in your foods, that is a big winner for me. When you can see the fresh seasoning in your food, that does something to me. Now, if I don't see any seasoning, I'm not gonna assume that you don't have it in there, but sometimes some people love to use a lot of powdered seasoning. So I have a little parsley here. It depends on now what we're cooking. And this is a large enough for a family of four. So if you have a family of four, this is enough for a family of four. So, so we got this, the parsley down pack. We're gonna push that over to the side. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my garlic. Now I already have peeled garlic. So if you like more garlicky flavor, you can do a whole clove, but this is a half a clove. So we're gonna cut all these garlics up that's already peeled, all right? This looks good. It just smells great. Now, you know, one thing I know a lot of you guys are home with during the pandemic and a lot of you are working from home. It makes sense that you have time to cook now. And it's good to have family bonding and when your kids are finished with the virtual learning and you know, some of you are frustrated that this is very stressful, but you have to take this opportunity to understand this is family bonding. And I really truly believe that cooking is a therapeutic way to bond the families together. I was reading somewhere, I'm not sure where, but they were saying that if you can get your family at the dinner table without the cell phones, without the technology, without the computers, and just sit there and talk to your families and bond, that is a beautiful way to bond with your family, cooking. Let me tell you something about my grandmother. My grandmother's the oldest of 10. And you can smell her food a mile away when she's cooking. And everybody in the neighborhood knew that my grandmother was cooking. It brings people together, good food. That's why I named this show Cooking With Love because 
you can actually taste the ingredients, you can taste the love in your food. So when my grandmother would cook the big pot of gumbo, my grandfather, he's gone, but he loved my grandmother cooking, my brothers, everybody in my family know how to cook. My mom, uh, watching her cook, uh, my uncles, uh, I have an uncle that cooked for 30 years. It's just a blessing to come from a family that uh, bonded during cooking, especially for holidays or Thanksgiving, man, you would see so much food everywhere. And you would see those ladies, those elders in that kitchen cooking. So I'm just blessed to come from that type of family. And if you, ha if you haven't came from that kind of family, it's okay. It can start with you. And that's why I'm here to show you to bind your family together with cooking. So now that we have our garlic and we have our parsley cut, we're gonna push that to the side. We're gonna move to the yellow bell pepper. Ooh, this is beautiful. Look how healthy that is, just awesome. Now you don't have to use this whole bell pepper. I'm gonna cut half of it and I'm gonna use half of it because again, this is just for a family of four. All right, so we're gonna cut that bell pepper. Now you could cut it long ways if you want and then go back and cut it sideways. If y'all could just smell this, it just does something to me. See the seeds, the importance of the seeds in your foods. Um, unfortunately, a lot of grocery stores are selling products without seeds. I'm sorry to tell you, the seeds are the best way to know that it was grown from the ground. Okay, so when you see the seeds, you're good to go. All right, so let's get this going. So we got the yellow bell pepper going. The yellow bell pepper has a little tangy sweet taste to it. Okay, this bell pepper that I'm cutting up, why am I using all these bell peppers? I'm gonna tell you why. We're cooking a dry shrimp pasta without the cream sauce and with you don't know, some of you may not know, when you're using bell, bell pepper has water in it. And when you are sauteing these bell peppers and this food down, it's gonna create water. It's gonna create a little stock once you saute it. That is one of the reasons why I use fresh seasoning because I don't have to add anything else to it. It's gonna cook down once we get those shrimp in the pot. We got the yellow pepper. You can cut this up how large or how big you want. I like it kind of like medium size. I don't like uh, too fine because I actually want to see it. I actually want to see the seasoning in my food. That's just my preference. If you want to cut it down really, really fine where you don't see it and you want it to pure, well, puree in it, you, you kind of going to take away from it if you just, especially when you're using those, um, those machines, those uh, food processors. Make sure when you use a food processor, when you're using your bell pepper with your food processor, that it doesn't turn into a soupy. So you have to do it maybe like one minute, let it, let it chop it up and get it on out there because if you keep it in too long, it's gonna be really, really watery and you don't want that. And that's why I was telling you, it already makes its own water once you saute it. Okay, so I'm gonna move this to the side over here. We don't need all that yellow bell pepper. So now we're gonna go to the red one. All right, guys. We're gonna go to the red pepper. Isn't that beautiful? Ooh, I love it. So we're gonna cut half of that. I'm cut half of this red bell pepper. Don't cut yourself now. And I'm gonna use the smaller half. All right, I'm gonna put that right over here. All right, so the red bell pepper, it's a little more bitter than a yellow bell pepper. But again, all of this together, it has an amazing taste. I want y'all to understand, understand what I mean by the taste, combining all of these seasons together, just like a big pot of gumbo. When you put all those meats in your gumbo and it just give it a distinguished taste. Growing up in New Orleans is actually a huge blessing because we have some of the most famous chefs, famous cooks. Uh, even if you're not a chef or a cook, you're just a great cook. Uh, you're just born to cook and you just learn all of those New Orleans dishes. It's just a blessing to be from New Orleans because people from all over the world come here. All over the world, when you say you're from New Orleans, they like to hear you say, hey baby. <laughs> you know, you're sitting on your porch, you know, sometimes when you, we're just a neighborly people. We're just, just people of all different backgrounds. And let me tell you, when you're sitting on your porch, and people ask you, hey, you hungry? That's unheard of. When you go to different cities and countries, sometimes people don't, 
they, they're not as friendly and they think it's strange when they come to New Orleans. We're gonna feed you. You're gonna come to our house, you're gonna eat. We don't care what color you are, what background you are, we don't care. You're gonna sit down and eat this food. <laughs> and we think that's not polite for us, for you not to eat the food. So we got the red pepper, pepper cut up. And you know, I remember in the kitchen when my grandmother, we used to cook, and I, I'll tell you this funny story right quick. Um, you know, my grandparents are from Mississippi, believe it or not. And my grandmother learned how to cook New Orleans foods to the T. I'm going to the orange bell pepper now. My grandmother loved, they moved to, after they got married, they moved to New Orleans, right? And my grandmother learned how to cook New Orleans food, and she has mastered that. And she, she was a homemaker. I'm, when I say was, but she, she was a homemaker when my, my grandfather was alive. But she's still cooking. Even in the wheelchair, she's still cooking. My grandmother's always been heavy-handed when she feeds you and when she serves you, and I actually the same way. Um, my husband tell me all the time, <laughs> you, you're very, very heavy-handed. And I think part of that means that we just want to make sure you don't go hungry, that you stay full. So we're going to go ahead and get the green bell pepper. We're going to use half of this. Again, guys, as you can see, I'm using half of these ingredients. I'm not going to, because they're so big and uh, beautiful and uh, juicy. So, but, but, but the New Orleans culture, let me talk about that again, is we feed you. We cook. We cook with love. We, we you know, kids growing up, watching your parents in the kitchen. Um, a lot of men actually know how to cook well from New Orleans, and that, that's a blessing. You have so many men, somebody made a joke about <laughs> that the men cook like they mama and the daughters drink like they daddy. <laughs> I thought that was so hilarious, but believe it or not, there are a lot of tons of men in, from New Orleans that know how to cook. And they watch their grandmothers, their mothers, uh, get in that kitchen and cut up that seasoning. You know, even it doesn't matter what class that you come from, from New Orleans, we always love to cook. Cooking brings the families together, and I and I I, I can't stress the importance of the you know the pandemic going on. Unfortunately, you know a lot of people have lost their lives, and and uh, Big Mama, or, you know, there, there's you know millions of. Uh, nicknames that you can name your family members and they're no longer here and they are uh, you know maybe uh, big mama she the one made that awesome potato salad or, or uh, somebody uh, Larry Big Larry made the greens um, traditional New Orleans uh, holidays are just the best I mean smelling that gumbo on the stove hearing the seasoning being chopped up uh, baked macaroni um, if you don't know how to make macaroni, that's what they say you don't know how to cook. <laughs> when you see that big macaroni, how cheesy, my grandmother knows how to cook everything. And like I said, she comes from Mississippi. And, you know, my mom was born and raised here, uh, all of my uncles, but they all know how to cook from her. And this is why you see me here today, Cooking With Love TV show. So we got the green going, we got all that going on right now all right so look how beautiful do y'all see this do you see where we're going with this this is just color and again i i can't stress it you don't have to use all of this but this is so beautiful for your food it does something when you saute it down it's actually going to diminish a little bit it's going to get a little bit smaller so now we're going to move that green onion right here and we got an onion we got more to go we got more to go i think this is the last one and then we're going to go right over to the pot and put everything in there so now we have our onion. All right. Now, sometimes an onion can make you have tears. Let me see if this one will make me have some tears. Mm. It's not too strong, but I can handle it. So we're gonna peel that top layer off, and we're gonna get right into cutting this onion up. Everything's coming out perfect. All right, so now, let's cut this onion up. Again, you cut it up how you wanna cut it up. If you like big seasoning, little seasoning, fine seasoning, that's fine. But when you're using a food processor, make sure the bell pepper is not pureed. 
okay? And you know, one thing I want to emphasize is something about the kids when you have a hot meal putting on their stomach. When you, when you cook, when, they, when, those, when that child see you cooking and that child uh, sitting there, I remember my husband telling me when he used to live with his grandmother, he used to wait on his mom with, a, with, 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 with the apron on his chest and with two forks in his hand waiting on his mom to bring him some ribs. And she didn't necessarily cook the ribs, but he just loved those ribs. And he would sit there and wait for those ribs. So that's a, that's a childhood memory. You have memories of that surrounding cook. Just think about some families they may have that, that that's not, that may be poor. And they may have one pot that they're cooking out of. They may have a roast that they're going to split between 10 people in the family. You have all economical backgrounds that's from New Orleans. And the best way is to cook and share. So when you're not selfish, you're going to share that. Some moms went without. They have that one chicken breast, cut it up, and everybody eat from that. All right, so now we got all of our seasonings cut up. All right, so we got our seasoning cut up. When we come back, we're going to put it in the pot. We are back. Now we're ready to put our fresh seasoning in our saute pot. We're gonna put a little cooking oil in here. Actually, it's olive oil, canola oil. Put a little bit of that, and then we're gonna get our seasoning ready. Ooh, look how beautiful. See that? I'm gonna put it right in here. All right, just dump it right on there. Ooh, you hear that sizzle? Mmm, that's what you want. You wanna preheat your pot up a little bit, because we are actually gonna saute this down a little bit before we actually put the shrimp in there. Oh yeah. Okay. Get my spoon and move it around a little bit. Oh boy, it's beautiful, isn't it? I'm gonna add a little butter to it. Just a little bit, not too much. A little butter. Remember what I said, we're gonna saute this down because we want to cook it, because again, this is a very quick dish and we're not using the oven, so everything is going to be done on the stove. So while I'm sauteing my seasoning, we got our angel hair pasta ready, ready to go. The water is boiling. It's ready to go in. This angel hair pasta is probably going to take about five to seven minutes to cook, so we're just going to put it right on in there, let it do its thing, let it do its thing. So let's get back to our seasoning. Do y'all see how beautiful this is? I'm gonna cut it up just a little bit more. Because everything, time is of an essence. So if you don't have a lot of time, this is what you do, okay? So we got that rolling. I'm gonna cook it down a little bit more. And remember I said earlier in the show that you don't have to use all this season. Even if you have less time, you can just use garlic, parsley, and onion, and green onion, and, a, and bell pepper, that's it or whatever your taste buds are. Everybody don't like fresh seasoning. Everybody doesn't like the taste of seasoning. So now, getting this down, it's gonna take about three minutes to cook this down, and then I'm gonna get my shrimp in there. This smells amazing. This is what you want, guys. You want that amazing aroma. We got our pasta going over here a little bit. The water is boiling. And listen, angel hair is so simple to make. We're gonna just put a little bit of olive oil in there, okay? So just a little bit. All right, there we go. So we're gonna let that go. All right, I got about another minute on this sauteed vegetables, green onions. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is gorgeous. All right, look at that, guys. That's just amazing. Okay, so guess what? Now, I wanna put my shrimp in it. Now. Let me talk about the shrimp for a second. Economically, if you can't get fresh shrimp and you wanna get frozen shrimp, that's fine. You can get frozen shrimp, but these are fresh shrimp, peeled and deveined already. So it's your choice, whatever your pockets say that you need to do, because you can go to your local grocery store, you can get a bag of shrimp, um, depending on the size that you wanna get, you wanna get because all of the shrimp are, are, are in different sizes. Okay, so if you want them small, 
You can get them small if you want a medium size. These are medium sized shrimp. So now I'm going to put my freshly, fresh shrimp that's been deveined already and we're going to dump it in this pot. This is about two pounds of shrimp. Okay. Now if you're, if you're just, if it's just you, if it's just you, then you can use half of that. Okay, you can just use one pound. And if you want to eat off it for a few, few days, that's fine. So listen, now we're going to put our powdered seeds. This is where we put our powdered seasoning in. Now, as you can see, I only have fresh seasoning in here. So now I'm going to add some powdered seasoning. We're going to let that keep on sauteing. Remember I was explaining to you earlier how the, the bell pepper will make a juice? Now I do have canola oil in here. But, and I do have a little water from the shrimp, but the bell pepper is actually making a, a, a marinade for your, uh, for your shrimp pasta. So now, I have a little bit of garlic and herbs here. We're gonna just put a splash of that in there to your tasting, all right? Put a little bit of that. And then we have some garlic powder, some graduated garlic powder. Okay, you can go to the dollar store, guys, and get all of, the, all of these ingredients from the dollar store. It doesn't cost much. Okay, we're going to put a little of that in there. Beautiful. That looks great. All right, and then we got an another seasoning we're going to put in there. This is different seasoning that I like to use. And then everybody, we put a little accent. Keep stirring it around, get it sauteed in there. And as you can see, you just got to cook it down. It's turning pink. It's not all the way cooked yet, so we got the accent going. Put that in there. And then Creole season, our New Orleans traditional Zatarain's Creole season, everybody uses this. So you can use that, put that in there. Not too much, not too salty. Just a little bit of dash in there. Oh, it smells great. So also, I, you know, as you notice, I did use Italian parsley earlier, fresh parsley. but. I love this for decorations and I also like to add it in here. So we're going to add a little bit of dry parsley. Okay, Zatarain's dry parsley. We're going to put that in there. That is gorgeous. Do you see how it's coming out? All of these seasonings together. Do you see that? See how, look at the juice that it's making. See, again, this is pasta without the cream sauce. You don't have time to get a cream sauce. You just want to saute this down, cook it down. And then let's, let's see how our angel hair is doing. So we got our angel hair going here. Oh yeah, that looks great. So we got about maybe five more minutes on this angel hair and it'll be ready and we're gonna drain that. So like I was telling you guys earlier, this is just an awesome way um, to teach your kids, to show your kids to implement cooking in their spirits because again we can't always run to uh, the store we'll be right back all right now we are back we have drained the pasta we, we, it's time to eat so we're gonna put this right on Ooh, isn't that beautiful it smells wonderful guys Perfect meal for the family. We got to eat this food. I thank y'all for tuning in with us. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Right off the pot. Just fresh. All of those uh, different seasonings all together. Mmm, yummy. Y'all see that? All right, I'm about to scrape this pot here. Mmm. -hmm. I got to get all this seasoning on top of that. Look at that. Look how beautiful. Now, all right, I'm going to come back for that seasoning. So now I'm going to plate this food up. See how beautiful it came out? I'm going to put it, I'm going to eat this. Ooh, I'm so excited. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Smells beautiful. Smells divine. Divine. It smells divine. It's beautiful shrimp. I'm gonna cut up a little parsley. See those shrimp are just falling off of there. Wow, look at that. Put it on there. And then we're gonna 
put a little bit of parsley for decorations. Italian parsley on the side there. And we put a little bit on the top. Oh, that's perfect. Now we got our fork. Now we're gonna go over to the table. We gotta eat. And this is my beautiful mother. It's all about family time togetherness. Take time out with your family, at least once a week if you have time to sit down with your family and enjoy family time. It's so important. And I'll see you next time with Cooking With Love. It's time for us to eat. See y'all later. Ooh, that smells good. Mm.